So in the last class, we discussed the basic units of current electricity. And I remember that current is movement of charge, and that's defined as um, charge over time, so Q over seconds. And voltage is the potential difference, which is the ability of electrons to do work. So today we're going to look at electric circuits, and electric circuits are converting electrical energy into some form of useful energy. So if you're thinking about your home, can anyone think of some electrical circuits in your home? Yes? A stove. A stove, right. So what is a stove? It's taking electricity and it's turning into what? Heat. Heat, right. So you're, the electricity is coming in and it's heating up an element, which will then heat up your food. Right. Is there any other circuits you guys can think of in your home? Lights. A light, perfect. So to light up our room if we want to study in the dark, we're going to flick on a switch and the electricity is going to come through. And electricity by itself isn't going to light up the room. But when it crosses the filament, it gets really hot and produces a light. Anyone want to come up with another example? A hair dryer? Hair dryer, perfect. So a hair dryer actually is going to do two things. It's going to heat up, and then if it just was heating up, it would probably just burn your hair. But it actually has a fan that's going to blow the heat onto your hair so you can have those great hairstyles that you guys come to school with every day. Okay, so in a circuit, we have a bunch of components. We have an electrical source, an electrical load, a controlling device, a connector, and a limiting device. So we're going to go over the functions of them first. So can anyone come up with the functions of an electrical source? Any ideas? Yeah. You provide the power? Perfect. So it provides the energy to push the electrons around. Now in the handout that I've given you from last class, there's actually this chart at the bottom of the page, and you guys can fill this in as we're going along. So what would be the point of an electrical load? What does the load do? Yes. Perfect, exactly. It converts electrical energy into another form of energy. And when we're talking about circuits in our home, it's a form of useful energy. And what would be an example of a control device? Or sorry, what does a control device do? Switch. A switch. It on yeah. off. So it determines that the electrons will flow. And we have open or closed. And a connector. What is an what would a connector do? You think of how this all comes together. It provides a path for the electrical source to path the energy to the load. Exactly. So it provides a control path to, to the flow. And a limiting device. That would be something that limits the amount of current going through. Maybe. A little camera difficulties there, so we're going to resume our lesson. Um, so basically we just discussed all the functions. And I'd like someone to come up with an example of an electrical source. Can we give you an example of a source? Yes? Battery. A battery, perfect. Now make sure when we're distinguishing between batteries and cells that one of these is actually a cell. We're combining them, it's making a battery. So great. Okay, so what is an example of an electrical load? Anyone? Any load, yes? So for instance, a uh, coil that converts electricity to heat, like in an oven? Yeah, a coil, could be a coil. So it could also be a light bulb, fan, motor. Yeah. All those are great answers. And what's something that's a control device? Switch. A switch, yeah, it could be a timer, thermostat, regular switch, great. And something that's a connector, this is an easy one, so I'm just gonna put that on there, it switches a wire. And something that is a limiting device. Circuit breaker. A circuit breaker, yeah, the new houses have circuit breakers and the old houses have fuses. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to build a circuit, but we need to know a little bit about the symbols first. So I'm going to hold up a symbol, I'm going to mix them up, and you guys can tell me where they belong. So what would this be a symbol for? Wire. Wire, perfect. Okay, so that is my wire, <laughs> right there. Okay, and this symbol. Limiting device. Limiting device. It's a fuse. Right. And this symbol? Cell. Cell. Perfect. And this symbol? Load. Load. Perfect. So load can represent, remember, that it can be a light bulb, fan, or motor. And this? Control device. Switch. Switch. Excellent. Okay. So. I'm going to show you a little circuit that we're having here. 
And how our circuit is, we have a schematic diagram of a circuit. Now, why would we want to have a standardized system of symbols? I don't know why we would do that. Why would we want to keep everything the same? Yes. So that if someone were looking at some sort of a house plan or electrical house plan, that they know what it is. Yeah, great. So it would be, it's a standard. So if I show this to someone, I can have Bobby come up and build this for me. So we're going to build this together. So I'd like someone to come up and place the battery onto the circuit. Anyone? Who wants to come there? There's going to be lots of choice. Excellent. So our battery is going right there. Perfect. Okay. Now I'd like someone to come up and choose one of our switches. And we're going to put the switch right here. Who would like to come through the switch? Right there. So he's picked the knife switch. Now the other switch is called the push switch, which goes on momentarily. The knife switch goes on and stays on once we close it. Perfect. Okay. And one lucky person is going to get to pick the load. Excellent. And he's frozen the light bulb. What a bright idea. Um, okay. And so the other things we can do is a fan or a motor. So I'm going to quickly connect all of these things. I'm just going to put it down so it's easier. And then we're going to turn it on. Now what I want you to start thinking about is while I'm connecting these, is which way the electrons are going to be moving in this. Okay, so we are all connected here. And what I'd like you to do, I'm all giving you an electron. So I'd like you to come up and put the electron on the board following which way the direction you think flows. So everyone come up, all the black little velcro pieces are where they're. So point the arrow in the direction you think the electron is going to flow. And we're going to check it together. Great, so you guys all actually know which way the electrons go. So the electrons flow from the negative terminal through the switch and to this load and back down. So is this a circuit right now? No, it's broken by the switch. Right, but this is not a circuit because it's actually, it's an open circuit. And what we need to do is take the switch and connect it. So does someone want to come and do the honors? All right, come on down. And you're going to throw the switch and hopefully we're going to see what happens. Pull it over there. There we go. Perfect. So now we've completed our circuit, and the load here, we're converting our electrical energy into light, which is actually it's heating up the filament, causing light to be admitted. Okay, so we're just going to turn that off for now. This is an example of a direct current system. So there's another thing that we need to talk about is a fuse. The importance of a fuse, we didn't add it to our uh, diagram here, but what would be the importance of a fuse? to prevent an overload of uh, current from going through a system? Right, so, so preventing an overload. So the fuse can actually only hold a certain a little amount of current, and if it has too much, the fuse is going to break and stop the circuit, making an open circuit. So would it be a good idea to say, stick a random wire or a penny in a fuse place? Would that be a good idea? Right, it, would, it might not break the circuit, so you could damage your load, and you could also cause a fire. So I'm just going to show a little diagram, or a little demonstration. So pretending we're having a fuse, we're just going to plug in this into the wall, and this is actually just a piece of tinfoil representing someone putting something in between, to, uh, between a circuit. So we're going to put that on there. I would advise you not to try this at home, and we're going to plug this into the wall, and you're going to see here what happens if there's an overload in the circuit. <laughs> Excellent. So that's all for today. We're going to review next week Ohm's Law and we're going to learn more about what just happened here. So think about what just happened and we're going to apply this to Ohm's Law next week. Thank you.